All right, brothers and Sharon, here we are again. I just want to say I'm glad to be here. Uh, looking forward to sharing the word of God with you. I've been kind of struggling trying to figure out uh, a greeting because I've noticed that maybe sometimes somebody else might be listening is not from Rosa Sharon. So I, I've been trying a lot of different approaches. I haven't settled with anything yet, but I just want to greet you, Rosa Sharon, and uh, those that might be listening. I want to greet you also and pray that I might say something that um, that will help you to draw near to God, help you to understand him better, help you to want to serve him better, help you to love him more. And we just uh, thank you for this time. And uh, I just want to start off, I, <clears throat> I want to start off and preach a prequel. Now this is where I need you at, Rosa Shannon, if he was in here, you could kind of help me if, uh, if I'm not uh, doing it right. Because you know how sometimes I, I come up with these words. I got an extensive vocabulary, but uh, sometimes I don't remember what the meaning is. <laughs> but I'm a, this is going to be a, a prequel. And let me just start off, though, because, you know, when it comes to preaching the word of God, you know, it's the actual word of God that makes the difference. It's not the, the intellect or the charisma uh, of the preacher. Sometimes the intellect can help because it can help you to understand. Sometimes the charisma is good uh, because it motivates you. But what really makes the difference is the word of God. So if you hear the word of God with all the uh, charisma, all the intellect, all the skill, if you hear the word of God and receive it, it'll have an effect on you. But if you don't hear the word of God and you hear all this charismatic talking and this real intellectual thing, like you can go to evolution and get some real intellectual stuff, but you won't come to the conclusion that God is the creator. You always need the word of God. So I was kind of thinking about this message and you know, I be I always toil with my message because I don't have a pattern. <clears throat> I always toil with the message. So I was just thinking that what I'm gonna do today is tell you what the message about and then I'm gonna preach. Amen, amen. I can hear y'all already saying amen. So the message today really covers chapter 1 through, or 2, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And uh, if you remember last time I preached in chapter 1, I was showing you that the wrath of God was coming upon or being revealed to the ungodly and the unrighteousness of men. And, uh, and then I showed you how we are, how that, condemnation progressed or devolved. And I was just trying to get you to understand that because I wanted you to understand what we're talking about today, about being justified in the sight of God. Now to be justified is to be made right with God or is the righteousness of God being put on the sinner. So to be righteous with God, to be justified with God, is to be right with God. And in verse chapter 5, verse 1 of Romans, it talks about, therefore being justified by faith, by putting our faith in Jesus Christ, not in our righteousness. We're not made right with God by being good enough but therefore being justified by faith, by trusting in Jesus Christ, the finished work of Jesus Christ, we have peace with God. We have peace with God. We're no longer an enemy of God. There's no longer enmity between us. And then, and that's through Jesus Christ. 
So because we are justified, because of justice, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. And the key word there is Jesus Christ. I was always taught when you preach and you come up with a topic, you don't call it a subject because there's only one subject of the Bible and that's Jesus Christ. And he is the one that gives us, uh, uh, make it possible that we can have peace with God, Jesus. And sometimes I know some of my, some of my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, my black brothers and sisters have a problem with Jesus. I don't know what it is just yet because I haven't really dialogued with it, that we're trying to call him by his Hebrew name and we want to neglect Jesus. But to always make it clear, I just say the Christ. Do you believe in the Christ? Do you believe in the Messiah? Do you believe in the son of David? Do you believe in the baby that sucked the breast of Mary? If you believe in him, that's Jesus. You can call him what you want. But that's Jesus. And we have, we can, we have this peace with God because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we have access to this peace through Jesus Christ because of his grace, because of God's grace, because of God's favor. He made it possible that we can have access to him and access to his peace. And then we glory in that, we stand in that, that we can come to him regardless of what's going on in our life. You know our righteousness is as filthy rags. As often as they pop up, we still have access by Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, to come to the Father in prayer and we can find peace and solace there. And not only do we have this access to this glory of God, this we, we can go to this, this God. We also stand in that and we hope for that blessed future that every Christian main concern is all about, that, that future bliss. That's our motivation as Christians. We don't, we don't only rely on the word of God so we can be happy here. But, but, but the goal is the future. I mean, you could be a Muslim and be happy here. You could be a Jehovah Witness and be happy here. You could be an atheist and be happy here. So what's the point of being a Christian then? But it's that, that hope of glory. And not only that, my brothers and sisters, we're getting ready to start preaching in a minute. But we also glory or boast in our suffering. What? Boasting and having joy and suffering? Now I'm, I'm mixing my sermon up. How are you going to boast in you suffering? That don't even sound right. I heard a preacher say not too long ago. He said, hey, I'm rejoicing. I'm, I'm going to the dentist. I'm on my way to the dentist and just skipped his way to the dentist. How you going to rejoice in that, he said. You going to the dentist, they about to stick something in your mouth. They about to drill in your gum. And you happy you going to the dentist? And the man said, yeah, because all my teeth falling out and I got pain in my mouth. And when I get to this dentist and leave, I'll be all right. I'll look good and feel good. My brothers and sisters, the same thing. We can rejoice in trouble and tribulation. We can boast in it. I know it's hard. And if I don't forget when we get in our message, I'm going to help you to understand he was suffering when he told them to rejoice in their suffering. So my brothers and sisters, that's the message. That's the message without fluff. Fluff. Now it's time to preach. Or did I already preach? Turn with me to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. 
and I'm going to read in your hearing <clears throat> verses 1 through 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus the Christ. It don't say the, but I just don't want you to think that's his last name. That's his title. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Look at that word. Let me circle that word grace. And let me go back up and circle peace. It says access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Let me circle this glory right here. Y'all should be doing the same thing, but if you got your cell phone, I know you can't circle nothing. Well, you probably can highlight it. I'm about to mess with you. You need to start carrying your Bible too, even if you don't use it. Just carry it around with you. They're trying to make us leave our Bibles. Let's keep our Bibles. And not only so, but we glory. Again, let me go on and circle that one. Yeah, that's the one I meant to circle the last time. In tribulations also, knowing that tribulations worketh patience and patient experience and experience hope and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. Your word is truth. Your word is life. Your word is medicine to those who found it. And Lord, we're glad we found it. But now, Lord, it's preaching time. So Lord, I ask for preaching power. Lord, I pray for uh, uh, hearing ears. And I ask you to break up the fallow ground of all the hearts that might be listening. Lord, we just ask you to preach with power today and conviction and help us to draw close to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. All right, my brothers and sisters, the title for the day is No Justice, No Peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, ain't gonna be no peace. My brothers and sisters, in this world, that we live in is troubled. I mean, we are <clears throat> in a world full of trouble. You know, if you look at what's going on now, you could just see trouble just lifting this ugly head up. And not only just lifting this ugly head up, he's gonna continue to lift his uh, ugly head up. And it's gonna be battles going on. But in this world, brother, and my sisters, it's nothing but trouble. Look, when you get up in the morning, what you see? Trouble. On your way to work, when you're driving, when you're on the bus, what you see? Trouble. When you get to work, what you see? When you get to school, what you see? Trouble. Ain't nothing but trouble. On your way home, on, on the bus, driving on the freeway, trouble. When you get home, what's going on? Trouble. It ain't nothing but trouble in this world my brothers and sisters, trouble, hallelujah. And we are gonna have to not fear trouble. That's one thing I appreciate about our millennial brothers and sisters. They don't mind conflict, you know. They, they don't mind stirring up the pot. They don't mind raising their voice. I only like to raise my voice when I'm preaching. And I think I'm just excited. I'm not doing it on purpose. But I don't want to be going down the street hollering and protesting. I don't want to do it. But somebody got to do it. And I thank God for our brother. It's trouble in this world, my brothers and sisters. Let me tell you, it's so much trouble because the devil, he is the orchestrator of the course of the world. He is the one that caused these people or these racist people to indoctrinate the law and legislation and all kind of other stuff, their children with this hate 
of racism. You know, it, that, that the devil doing that. It was the, the devil who caused people to loot uh, buildings while Black Lives Matter was, was uh, protesting and was trying to get a point across. And it was the devil who had them doing that. And it was the devil trying to make the news media uh, uh, be distracted from the peaceful me uh, protest and start talking about all this negative stuff that was happening. The devil is in control of this earth. He, he's, he, got, he organized in the course of this world. And he got a gang of wicked spirits. Come on, y'all. I'm trying to tell you something. You got to get this. He got a gang of wicked spirits that's out here trying to cause havoc. And he even come up in the churches. And he got these these evil spirits coming around trying to destroy people and mess them up. But what I come to tell you today, my brothers and sisters, you can still have peace in this troubled world. You can still have this peace in this troubled world. No justice, no peace. You can't have peace without justice. You cannot become a child of God without justice because you're not good enough. Never can be good enough. You can't do good enough. My brothers and sisters, in this life, in this troubled world, we've been misused as black people. People don't believe that we are humans. I remember when I went to Europe, they got this thing that black people got tails. And I didn't believe they believed that. And it might be mixed around some other way, but they told me just walk and you look back and you're gonna see the Germans look back at you. And when I walked down the street and I looked back, they were looking. So in this world, there was no justice for the black man. We have been misused. We have been hoodwinked. We have been bamboozled. You know, in this messed up world, people don't even believe that the Messiah was born, that he died, that he rose from the dead, and that he ascended to heaven. People don't even believe that in this crazy world. They rather believe that two rocks hit each other and fell in some water in the earth evolved. But even in a mixed up world like that, my brothers and sisters, peace is available. And I just want to encourage you millennials to keep it going. Keep it going. Because you have the favor of God. God cares about the black man. God wants to vindicate the black man. And he will. So hang in there. My brothers and sisters, when you start talking about injustice, injustice began with sin. And sin began with the devil. Oh, I feel like I could go long, but I, I'm almost out of here. Sin began with the devil. Sin entered into the world by Adam. And when sin got into the world, death came. That's how we're condemned. We're condemned to die, to be separated from God. We have no spiritual life whatsoever. And we are separated from God and we are at enmity with God. You know, a lot of my friends and people I know and talk to, that's one of the hardest things for them to grapple with sin. How to sin, what it, you know, not acts of sin, how it got in the world. And then we got other people, they don't want to deal with an Adam because then you have to deal with a creation. But sin came in the world by one man, which was humanity, him and Eve, that was humanity. 
and sin was passed on from that human to the next human. And I thought I was going to say this, well, I am going to say this, but I probably should have researched it first. But how do you know your son, how do you think your son got that big old nose like yours? It was passed on. Why, how, how, why, or how, why is your son and your daughter got a temper? Because it was passed on to you, from you. Now, it don't have to be everything. Some stuff they got on their own. So we ain't going to let the millennials slide because they want to get on us. I don't know. I think I'm a baby boomer, but I'm up, I'm up there. So they don't, you know, but I got respect for you. I need you and you need me. I'm not going to go out there and protest and go to jail. You go to protest and go to jail and I'll come get you out. That'd be my role. But sin was passed on, my brothers and sisters, and it even got to racism. You know, we look at, we look at Michelangelo Cousin. All y'all got Michelangelo Cousin on your mantle in that big old gigantic Bible flipped open with a picture of Michelangelo Cousin with some blue eyes and long stringy hair. Huh? Am I right about it? <laughs> All right, so go back to it. So how, if, if sin came in the world by one man, sin was passed on to everybody. That's where they talk about the depravity of man. Not man so, 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 so messed up, ain't no good, and he probably ain't, but that ain't what depravity's talking about. He's messed up and ain't got no way out. It appeared that we as black people has been pushed down, pushed down, pushed down, pushed down with no way out. You know, I think about it, how we was, uh, we was not provided education. You know, and I just look, I used to say this, for, I've been saying this for years, you know, and we didn't get education, and then I don't know how they come up with uh, how they tricked us to think something wrong with education. We got a so-called thing speaking proper. What is that? I'm glad I hear you millennials do that quite a bit. That's good. So they, 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 they stripped us of our education. How, how, and look how they tricking us. They, they, and then they put us in front of a TV. And it's just probably one class of people. That maybe that's the class I came out of. And then you see all these diamonds. You see all these cars. All these watches. All this everything. Pocket full of money. And you want some. How you gonna get it? You ain't got no education. So you have to, you have to rely on the flesh. You're gonna have to lie on this sinful world and go out there and do something wrong and then become a statistic and be a part of uh, a never ending story. But thank God for the millennials. <laughs> I'm thanking God. And we, and we, I gotta find out if I'm a baby boomer, but we baby boomers, y'all know what I'm talking about. We need to talk to these millennials. We need to hear them and we need to share. But listen to this. So Adam sent sin in the world and everybody condemned. But because he died spiritually, he could not uh, provide spiritual life. All he can uh, provide is sin and death. And that requires a verdict. We need a justice of peace. We need some justice. No, we don't need justice. Justice has to prevail. So because we're born in sin and death, we're going to sin and die. That's what justice requires, demands. But the justice of peace being God, he wanted to justify us, and he justified us through the Messiah, through the cross, through the 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 son of David through the baby that sucked the breast of Mary. 
Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. So the, the justifier justified sinful man. Remember I talked about uh, the wrath of God is being revealed against the ungodliness and the unrighteousness of men. And I showed you that devolving spiral and then you can look at it right now. We're still devolving and we're trying to get up a few steps. So this justifier had, he couldn't let a slide y'all, you know, because then he's not the judge. Well, he's not a just judge. He couldn't let it slide, so he had to, somebody had to take our place. Somebody had to take the wrath of God. Somebody had to pay the price. And that was Jesus Christ. That was Jesus Christ. He paid the price. And like one man brought sin and death in the world, the other man brought life and grace and joy and the Holy Spirit. And that's Jesus. So we were justified by faith. And that gave us peace with God. Not the peace of God. Peace with God. You got to know there's a difference there. The peace with God means that we're no longer uh, at enmity with him. That means that our relationship is, is settled. We're no longer an enemy. We are now friends of God. That's the peace with God. That's final and, and it's not uh, what you call it experiential. Experiential. See, I'm feeling like I'm home now. I just need somebody in here to laugh at me every now and then. But it's, it, 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 it's not something you feel, but it's a fact. And then look at verse 2. And all this is through Jesus. And that's when we need to lift him up, y'all. You know, I've been talking to people. We so focused on uh, uh, who smoked cigarettes. Who smoke dope? Who drink alcohol? Who drink too much alcohol? Can you drink alcohol? Can you dance? Oh, ha, ha. We got all this old superficial stuff that, that when you become born again, God works with you and he tames that and he fix that and he directs you in that. That's all we want to talk about when we get in church. But we don't want to talk about the, the Great Commission. We don't want to talk about the world, going out, sharing the gospel in the world. We don't want to talk about feeding the people. We don't want to talk about going to Bible study two times a week. We don't want to talk about being nice and forgiving and long-suffering. Because we're on this legalistic thing. So listen, my brothers and sisters, this peace with God comes through faith, not by works. You cannot have peace with God because you're so good. You can't do that. You cannot overcome this racist America by your skill. You got to rely on God, young folks. Y'all say y'all believe. You might not want to go to church, but you say you believe. Depend on him. Pray before you go out there. And you don't even have to pray while you're out there for a show. You can pray before you go out there and walk longer. Rely, put your faith and confidence in God because you ain't good enough. Okay, let me move on. Verse 2. Uh, by whom also we have access by faith unto this grace. We have access by faith unto this grace, unto the grace is favor. Access unto this grace, unto favor. Access where we can walk up to God and we can talk to God 
and we can have peace with God. We have access by Jesus also. But listen, this access now is what's going to help us to experience this peace. You know, how are you going to experience peace and you judging your life based on your righteousness? And your righteousness is filthy rags. How are you going to get peace out of that? And your righteousness are filthy rags. So we need to access by grace. We need to access grace. Grace is, is not only unmerited favor, Great, listen, I wrote this down. I wanted to make sure you hear this. Now, if I could find it, because I know my time is, my time is gone. Uh, Failing to meet, uh, da, 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 da. Hmm, resurrection, backslide, people. Huh, huh. Hmm. Oh, yeah, here it is. Check this out. Grace, a favor done without expectation of return. So God is God has forgiven us our sin, welcomed us into his family, and now he has no expectations of nothing. You don't have to, you don't have to do right. You don't have to read your Bible every day. Now we know we're supposed to do all this stuff, but you don't have to stop saying bad words. You don't have to do this. He let you in with no expectation of return. And it's kind of hard for us as Christians to talk about this type of stuff because we know somebody's going to take that and they're going to run with it, think they can live any way they want. And for me, I say you take it, you run with it, and then you and God will work that out. But for those of us who are in Christ, listen, God don't expect, he, he gave that to you because he loved you. Listen to this. It is by grace that we find the peace of God. See, you cannot find grace. You cannot find peace with God. You cannot have the peace of God. That's why we got to study our Bible. You say, oh, Jesus said, my peace I leave you, so I'm supposed to have it. Well, why you don't have it? Because it's more than just that. You have to access that through grace. You got to recognize grace. You got to accept grace. You got to leave the law to the side. Not saying you still got to obey it, but you don't, oh, you can't please God by the law. Listen, when they came to the, uh, we ain't going to get to trouble, but I'm going to make sure next time I preach we might deal with that trouble. But uh, back in the uh, days of the Greeks and the Hebrews, or at least the Israelites, the Greeks, they didn't, they didn't want to access God. They, didn't, they wanted to stay out God's way. Because they just wanted to make sure they didn't make God angry. That's how the Greeks were, these pagan religions. They just didn't want to make God angry. Earthquake come, they think God mad. Whoop, there it is. How many people heard that? <laughs> Amen. Oh, see, now that was, see, he, he gave me that one straight off the cuff. I'm usually bringing my own stuff off the cuff. Look at that. See, that's how the pagans believe. Every time something happens, uh, oh, we must have did something to God. And they think God is punishing them. And then the uh, back in Israel day, uh, 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 when they, they, if they want to approach God, if they did like we did, say, you know what, I feel like just kicking it with the Lord. I just want to talk to the Lord and tell him how much I love him. And if they walked their behind up in the holies of holies, they would drop dead. They didn't have that access. And that's why I'm talking about peace. You're not going to have peace with God if you're looking at God, your relationship with God is based on some legalistic rules or rituals. You got to come into a love relationship with God, accept what he did for you, and follow him. All right, let me close out. I'm almost done. Grace. God's grace affects man's, listen to this, sinfulness, and not only forgives the repentant sinner, but brings joy and thankfulness 
to him. See? See, that's what grace do for you. That's the definition of grace. Bible study class, that's why I want you to get that word study Bible. You can look up the word grace and figure out and find out how they used it at that time and what it meant. So we got God on our side, uh, Black Lives Matter. And I got some concerns with y'all too because you got some All Lives Matter that contradicts biblical stuff. And I ain't gonna go into that. Now, if we wasn't on video, I would go more into it. But God is on our side. You working it where you at, and, and the believers gonna work it where they at, and we all gonna be victorious. Because black lives do matter. If there's no justice, there will not be any peace. On the earth, after the earth, and in this situation today. You gotta do me right. You can't just, you just can't treat me any old way and think I'm gonna take it year after year, then my kids gonna take it, then their kids gonna take it, year after year after year. And you can see, you did us wrong, you did us unfair, and we didn't know no better, and we burned up our own property, which we shouldn't have did. And then you did it to us again, and we went and burned up somebody else's property, which we shouldn't have did. And then we tried to get in some other people's property that had more money, and they wouldn't let us in there. But if there's no justice, no peace, because we can get to Beverly Hills too, we shouldn't. But there's no peace. That's why I became a Democrat. See what I'm telling you? See my, uh, what do you call him? The pre, the, uh, the pre, uh, hold up. Not prelude. Not a sequel. The prequel. Prequel. See the prequel? See what I'm talking about? All this fluff I'm giving you, I already told you the sermon before I read the scripture. And now I'm giving you a lot of fluff. And some of you probably like it. And it might be good and motivational for some. But that's why uh, I used to be a Democrat. I'm an independent, but I'm, a, I'm not a Bernie Sanders independent. But one thing I always appreciated about the Democrats was even though they was going to stick us and do us wrong, they'll throw us a bone. They're just not going to leave you out there with nothing. They'll throw you something. But the Republicans, they say every man got to pull himself up by his own bootstrap. And listen, sometimes pulling myself up or himself up by their bootstrap is coming to you getting yours which ain't right. So let me close with this. See, I didn't look at the time at the beginning. Let me close with this. Look here. We say, verse 2 says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, unmerited favor wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of glory. Now this glory here is talking about God's honor, God's greatness, God's future for us. We stand and rejoice in that. And not only, verse 3, so, but we glory. This is a different word for glory. And it said we boast and rejoice in tribulation in hardship. And the text tells us here that he was being persecuted when he was telling us to glory and boast in that because it's going to produce patience and experience and experience hope because we don't have to be ashamed, my brothers and sisters. We don't have to be ashamed. So let me just say this to you in closing. Uh, 
No justice, no peace. I mean, it ain't, it, it is not nothing, uh, that's just a fact. This wasn't planned. What's happening now, what's been happening throughout history was because of injustice. So now we need to treat each other right. We need to be fair. We need to be just in our doing. And we need to right the wrong. America can't slide, God ain't let nobody slide. So we need to get out there right where we are and whatever the Lord leads, we need to do for this cause so we can make progress for our children and our children's children and so on. So we talk about no justice, no peace, my brothers and sisters. You cannot have peace with God because justice requires a price to be paid, which is death. So you can't even have a relationship with God because of your default um, condition. Because you were born in sin, because Adam passed sin on to you, he couldn't pass spiritual life to you because he was spiritually dead. So the only thing he can pass to you is a big old nose and some sin. Or some pretty brown eyes. Or some nice dark skin with dimples. But all he can pass on to you is sin and death. He couldn't pass you spiritual life because he died spiritually. But Jesus is called the second Adam. And through his blood, not Adam, through his blood, you can have life. And you can have life eternal. But what you have to do, though, you just can't come to him talking about, Lord, I want, I want life, but I'm just going to do what I want. You got to repent. You got to change your mind. You got to recognize that you a sinner. You got to recognize that you were born in sin. And you got to recognize that Jesus make it possible so you can come out of that. And then you can live a full and meaningful life now, and then you can spend eternity with him without being separated from him. That's the gospel. Jesus died on the cross. He was buried, he rose from the dead, and he ascended to heaven to intercede on our behalf. And he said, as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. So the invitation is for you out there. Roshan should, everybody should be saved. I wish it was a way to know if somebody accepts Jesus. But, but for you, we don't have to know. As many as receive him, can you receive him? Are you willing to, to abandon your way of thinking, to abandon your way of living, and choose his way, and follow his way, as long as he gives you the strength and ability? If that's you, I need you to do that, my brothers and sisters. Accept Jesus right now in your heart. If you can believe that he died on the cross for your sin, rose from the dead, you can, you, you, you can have him as your Savior right now. So we ask you to uh, accept him. Amen. Amen. Yep.